What's up, I'm travel photographer Brendan Vance of Brendan'sAdventures.com and today I'm going to show you how to edit this badass image from Orkhan Falls in Central Mongolia. Let's do it. Okay, so in front of us we have the edited finished version of this um, waterfall photo I took at Orkhan Falls in the Orkhan Valley in Central Mongolia. And I'm going to show you how I edited it. And when you edit an image like this, it's obviously important to first explain how I shot it. And what I did here is I actually used two images, two exposures, both shot in raw format. And I used a neutral densifying gradient filter as well to bring up more of the sky. So what I did is I shot one exposure for the foreground here to make sure everything was the, the proper uh, exposure. And then I shot a second one for the sky and put them both together using Photoshop. And now we'll get into the steps and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so once you're back home from the field and you've got two images you like, one for the foreground and one for the sky, what we're gonna do is just import them into Photoshop. And I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud here, but it'll really work on any version of the Photoshops uh, at all. So it's a simple process. You don't need the finest and newest of Photoshop technologies. And so what I have here is my image for the foreground and my image for the sky. Where I shot the foreground at f11, two seconds at 10 millimeters on my Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter lens, which is for the crop sensor 60D. And then my sky image is just underexposed a bit, so it's 0.6 seconds with all the other settings the exact same. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do our raw edit for each image. So first we're going to do this one and we're just editing the foreground. We don't care about the sky. It doesn't matter. It's just the foreground. And the first thing I see is that my white balance is way off. It's really purple. So I'm going to make it a little bit green. We were dealing with a crazy funky light straight on. So that's partly the problem. So you see that just greens things up and then I might cool it down just a touch. Um, if you want to figure out a white balance, try to find something that's obviously white in your image and just match it up with that. So this is this water here is white. So you just match up the, the look of the image with that water and you should be fine. And then we're just going to do a couple things here. So I want to increase the exposure a bit to brighten everything a little bit more. And then I'm going to probably open up the shadows a bit just to bring out the trees a bit more and the, the clips, and then I'm gonna drop the blacks to counterbalance it all and kind of just bring out a nice contrast. Some people like to move the contrast thing around a lot. I like to do it a bit more manually, so um, we'll do that. And then just the color, so bring out a lot of color. It's, I'm kind of going for the wow factor, wow factor with this image, so lots of color and maybe even a little bit of saturation. And there we've got our foreground. It's perfect in the foreground. There are some issues obviously from the long exposure. You've got some stuff down here that's a bit messy, but it's not a big deal. And then we're going to take our dark image and really it doesn't need that much editing because the sky is pretty cool as it is. Um, I'm going to look in to make sure there's no noise and really there's no noise at all. So I don't even have to do any noise reduction. I'm going to just bring out the color, the vibrance, the saturation, make it just look really powerful and then you can also do things like add some contrast to the sky and whites usually just brighten everything up a little bit more some people like to use clarity on the sky we're just going to use a touch of that also you can drop the clarities and make it look really soft like that which is also cool so it's just personal preference really so we're going to go like that and we've basically got our sky done and we can move on we're going to import both the images by clicking select all and then open the images and it'll bring it into Photoshop here. So right now we've got both of our images in Photoshop. You've got the foreground here and then just over here we've got our background, the sky. And what happens now is really simple. The image goes from being two images to one almost instantly. It's so easy, I promise you. We're going to take our sky Click this move button up here and we are just going to pop it on top of the other image. And make sure it's completely aligned by these purple lines you see on the edges of the image. 
So then we've got one image aligned on top of the other. It creates a layer here. And then we're just going to add a vector mask here by clicking there. And it's simple. Find your gradient tool here. Click it. Make sure everything is set up properly for a gradient. And then it's just a simple drag like this in any line you want. Usually if you hit shift, you'll get a straight line. And you just go like this and boom, we've got the bottom layer revealed. So you're going to obviously get a couple issues when you do something like this. So you want to mess around with it a little bit to make sure you've got a nice steady gradient until you get it right. And this is taking me longer than it should. Something like that, I guess, is what I'm looking for. And that takes us on right to our next step, which is putting the final touches on it. So obviously we're going to get some issues when we do a gradient. For example, you get over here, you get this kind of like dark area, and that's just because the gradient didn't really reach it. It was stretched up here. We've got dark edges there and a little bit of darkness on the top of these mountains. So I'm going to just show you how to correct that really quickly. Uh, we've still got our vector mask here, so that's what we're working with. And I've got the brush tool selected, and it's 500 pixels. It's got soft hardness. It's only 60%. And then I'm setting my opacity at 70%. And basically, I'm just going to paint over the areas that I want to brighten up. So it's just, again, revealing 70% of that bottom image. So something like that just brings out the color a little bit more. And we can also paint the mountains. Although, actually, you know what? The mountains, to me, look kind of cool, darker like that. So I'm actually going to leave them. What I might do is just go really, really lightly over it at like 18% opacity, which means that just like 18% of the bottom image is going to show up. And it just should lighten up the hardness a bit there in the mountains. As you can see, it's doing perfectly. So yeah, then basically we've got our two exposures down into one. And I really like the look of it. I've basically got an image I'm completely happy with top to bottom in terms of the exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flatten the image. And I'm going to work on some final touches. You can see there's all this really messiness over here. It's coming from all this foliage that was just blowing around in the wind, and the long exposure blurred it. So it makes it look really messy. In. And I'm just going to adjust that using the clone stamp and uh, an opacity of about 60% or so. And I'm just really going to do this quickly to show you how to do it. And basically, you're just selecting Alt for a spot that you want to um, to copy, and then just painting over it. And so you can do it pretty quickly, to be honest. That just makes the whole scene just look a lot less messy, I think and cleans it up and really we've got our finished image. You can bring that back into Lightroom or do some more adjustments here in Photoshop if you want to pop the colors a little bit more or change the white balance. For me, I'm a little bit more of a purist when it comes to the images. I like to keep them clean. So I'm done with this image. It is finito finished and I'm stoked about how it came out. I love the foreground, how it's colorful and a little bit messy. And I love the waterfall here. I love the rocks and the sky. For me, it's a cool image, and I'm happy to share this on my platforms. Now, speaking of my platforms, I want to urge you now to head over to brendansadventures.com and sign up for my newsletter. When you sign up for my newsletter, you get a free copy of my Adventure Travel Magazine, Bag of Boomer Magazine, so that in itself is worth it. I promise you. Uh, also, I want to urge you to subscribe to this channel. There's a ton of cool stuff coming up. I've still got stuff from Central Mongolia, and then I'm off to Switzerland and Canada and Iceland and some other cool places along the way. So stick around to Brendan Benson Travel Photography. Lots of cool stuff coming up on the program. I will see you next time. Peace.